to a reaction now from Arizona Republican Congressman Andy Biggs, by the way, a member of the House Judiciary Committee. I know this is just breaking, Congressman, but this federal judge saying he won't block these congressional subpoenas for financial records from the likes of Deutsche Bank and others. What do you think? Well, I'm troubled by that because, to be honest with you, I, I'm not understanding the legal ramification for that or the legal rationale for that, quite frankly. And I think this is indicative of what we're going to continue to see, and it goes back to, to the lead story with President Trump and, and the Speaker and Minority Leader. He's tired of the investigations. Uh, they're, they're hindering everything that he wants to do, and now they're attacking his family, his family organization, their business. Uh, and, and they've gone after people that are associated with the president, and it's just... It's quite frankly, it's too much. It's Had too much. Nancy Pelosi not said after that meeting with Democrats that uh, he, he's been covering up, that the president has engaged in a cover up, uh, do you think that meeting, that infrastructure meeting, would have lasted a little longer than three minutes? <laughs> Most assuredly, I think it would have lasted longer than that. Because in spite of the fact that the Democrats are proceeding with kind of quasi impeachment investigations here, um, which her language actually ratcheted it up because. Um, and she herself harkened back to the Nixon impeachment where they used the cover-up to go after Nixon. And for her to allege cover-up, you know, it really kind of threw gas on the fire here, especially when you consider you had uh, 19, uh, uh, 19 lawyers, 40 a agents, 1.5 million documents, 2,800 subpoenas. The whole thing, I mean, when you start looking at it, you say, this has got to be the worst cover-up in history if it was a cover-up. So. Uh, she's, she's trying to lay the groundwork for something bigger. Do you think, maybe being in the majority, uh, that she and her people know things that you don't? Well, I, I, I'm not sure that I buy into that because uh, having been in the majority the last two years, um, unlike Speaker Pelosi, I was at most of those interviews and depositions behind closed doors. I had a lot of classified briefings. I've read Mueller report. Uh, I don't think she knows uh, anything more than the phrase cover up and is trying to incite uh, and mollify, quite frankly, her base and those in her, in her caucus who, who want an impeachment hearing. Now, what, what I get from this is it, it seems that both sides have weighed the, uh, the calculus of, of not working with the other. Yeah. The unfortunate thing about that is that it also means that uh, you're not going to make progress on infrastructure as if that was expected anyway. But it also means that by summertime when we're up against the debt ceiling, we could be staring at a government shutdown, the progress of talks that even you know, Mitch McConnell was heralding on dealing with a two-year budget or a better way to handle our government finances. That's off. I mean, this is scorched earth, isn't it? Well, it, it appears to be that way, but I'm, I'm hopeful that even though there was some pretty heated rhetoric today, I'm hopeful that certainly that the budget issues can be resolved before September. It's not going to be resolved in the normal course of things, which is the budget process, but just to get CRs, debt ceiling issues, like you say, I think, I think we're going to get those done in this body before September in spite of the rhetoric. But you're right. I believe this has impeded everything from infrastructure to border security to, to uh, you, you name it, health care reform issues that we have. And we've got a lot of issues that we aren't able to get to, even within ju the Judiciary Committee, because we're so focused on right. this stuff. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Uh, Congressman, thank you very much.